All right, what's up guys? Welcome back to a brand new video. What if you guys today is a brand new Division 2 video, and today I want to go over the five things you should never do under Division 2. Now, I wanted to make a video like this to give you guys some tips and tricks for new players or anyone who might be getting the game in the future. These are some of the things I did learn over the past couple weeks and weeks of playing this game, and these are some of the things I did kind of wish I knew in the back of my mind before getting to the end game content and just overall to make the game a better experience. So I want to give you guys again some tips. You can maybe use this as a kind of reference or a guide in the future if you are playing the game and you are maybe a low level as of right now or if you get the game in the future as I said. So if you guys enjoyed this video or find it helpful, don't forget to leave a like, subscribe for more videos, and let's get right into this. Also, I do want to say if you guys have any questions, let me know in the comments section below. Um, I'll try to get back to you as soon as possible. If it's regarding the video or just the game, once again, just let me know. But the first thing I actually do want to talk about is deconstructing. Now, deconstructing this game is kind of weird. Um, not really weird from a perspective that it's, you know, hard or whatever, but you can really use anything in the game at any moment. So if, if it's a weapon, a, a gear piece, no matter what it is, if you are pretty much going to deconstruct something, it can always have value in the future for, for builds or if things get changed in the future, uh, you can always maybe use it. So the one thing I would recommend keeping 100%, even if you are a really, really low level, is a Desert Eagle. Now, the reason why you want to keep a Desert Eagle pistol on your character is because later on you can actually get an exotic that's called the Liberty, and this is a pretty good exotic in the game. It's not the best one or whatever, but it's actually pretty good, and if you are one of those people that you are collecting exotics in the game and just want to have everything in the game, a Desert Eagle is something you will need in the future. And also another reason why I'm saying this is because for me at least, the RNG gods with a Desert Eagle have been a pain and I cannot get this pistol in PvP, I can't get this pistol in PvE, and I, I know so many people that had this kind of pistol before when they were like level 30 or in the lower gear scores, but they didn't really want it and they didn't really think about it, they deconstructed it, and now they want to craft the exotic uh, pistol and they can't get a Desert Eagle and it's just a pain you know, of, of farming and, and trying to get lucky. So uh, I do understand some of you guys might be saying, why not just get the pistol from the specialization, uh, the Desert Eagle? Unfortunately, that one doesn't work. You can't really use that one to craft the Liberty. So again, you will actually need a, you know, a specific Desert Eagle that you actually find in the game, either PvP or PvE, to actually craft it into Liberty. So the next thing I would recommend doing is keeping all your exotics and most of your gear and weapons in the Division 2. Now, first of all, for the exotics, there's really no point of deconstructing them. All of them have the exact same talents, no matter how you get them. If it's PvP, if it's PvE, all of them will have the same exact talents. Um, so there's really, again, no point of deconstructing them. The only reason you might want to deconstruct them for is the exotic components, but I would only recommend doing that if you have duplicates or if you desperately need uh, exotic components to have a kind of higher gear score chatterbox or, or, or exotic shotgun whatever the case is. Besides that, again, no really points of deconstructing them, even if it's a pretty low level. Now for the gear and weapons, the reason why I would recommend keeping most of them is because all of them are pretty much useful um, for future builds or just in general if there are some kind of future changes for the talents or just roles in general. So the way that Division 2 works with like recalibration and stuff is you can pretty much use anything, even if it's a really, really shitty like chess piece. If it has a decent second talent or if it has a decent kind of role for like headshot damage or weapon damage, I would recommend keeping that and just maybe start storing it away in your stash. Later on, if you're making a damage build or if you're making a specific build, you can roll that damage, you can roll that talent onto the chest piece you need and you won't have to worry about farming for a god roll chest piece and you won't have to kind of stress of farming everything at once. So that's the reason why I would recommend keeping like most of the gear and weapons. Also, obviously you can use most of them for um, the projects for like the settlements, for like blueprints or even XP. Uh, so again, just keeping all your gear and I wouldn't say all of it because obviously it's going to get too congested, but like keeping most of the good gear and the weapons with like decent talents for like damage or maybe, maybe future builds that you have planned in your mind is very, very smart because it's going to save you a lot of time and a lot of kind of stress in the future. So again, that's the, that's the next thing I would recommend keeping on the game. Now next up we have low-end skill power mods and any blue general mods. 
The general mods are getting fixed in the future, um, but as of right now, you can still keep them. And if you are grinding and you are a maybe level 20, maybe level 15, if you're getting any blue general general mods with like weapon damage or armor, 100% keep them. You can use them on your future builds. They are very, very good. And there are a lot of people making second characters pretty much going for these general mods so they can benefit their builds um, in World Tier 5. And just overall, these mods are very, very important. Now, the low end skill power mods, again, you can use them on your um, skills and kind of get benefit out of that. Uh, because the skill power mods you get in World Tier 4 or even 5 for your mods, or your skills, I should say, are pretty annoying. You you are required a lot of skill power, and most of the time you can't really use them. So um, low end skill power mods and just blue general mods, definitely keep an eye out on them if you are farming uh, like low levels and if you're not level 30 as of right now. Up next, I do want to talk about the Hunters and the Masks in the Division 2. So this is actually something that I would recommend doing when you are in World Tier 4 or World Tier 5. If you are solo, do not attempt this if you are undergeared or even if you're not level 30. I know this is something a lot of you guys have been trying and I've been getting a lot of messages personally of trying to give like advice or some tips. What can I do if I want to kill the Hunters and I'm not level 30 yet? So. My one advice, and this is the most important thing, is don't do this at all. Just wait until you have good gear, until you have decent builds, and you can attempt them in World Tier 4 or World Tier 5. Now, if you are playing with friends or a squad, it's a different story. You guys can go and do this if you are le like level 10 or even level 5, and you can get these masks, you can get these keys, as long as you are kind of in the party with them and they kill the hunter, you can just go over the body and collect whatever you get. But if you are solo, again, just wait until you are geared up because they will pretty much one shot you if you're not and they're just really hard to kill overall if you're by yourself so that's the number one thing also i do want to say that sometimes if you are attempting them and you don't complete them and you don't get to kill them and you maybe like give up in the next couple of tries sometimes the hunters will glitch out and they won't spawn again for you until you reset your game multiple times or until you switch sessions and go to like a friend session and even if you do that, sometimes the hunters will not drop keys, like the ivory keys, and they will not drop the mask because they're kind of bugged out and stuff. I'm not really sure if they fixed that already, but I know there has been a few cases where a few of my friends were trying to do this when they were at a lower level and then try to do this again later on, and the hunter just didn't really drop anything for them, and it was bugged out. So again, if you're by yourself, if you're thinking about doing these hunters, getting the masks, just wait until you are in World Tier 4 or World Tier 5 to attempt them. The last thing I do want to talk about is actually control points. So the one thing I will say is do not do level 1 control points. And I know that might sound crazy, especially if you are a lower level. If you are, you know, ranking up, if you're trying to get level 30, yes, do them. They're going to give you some XP. But later on in the end game, do not do level 1. They're not really worth it. They're not going to give you really any gear or really any materials. And it's just kind of a waste of time. What you want to be doing is level 3 control points because you get way better loot from the kind of supply, supply room at the end. You will get some, you know, better weapons and, and gear and you will just get overall more stuff. But also you will get blueprints in the game. So it can be a suppressor blueprint, it can be a scope blueprint for any gun or just any weapon in general. And the, it is random. There's really no control points specifically you can farm to get a specific kind of attachment for your gun. But level 3s are just uh, the way to go in my opinion. Sometimes it is kind of hard and it takes a little bit longer, especially if you're by yourself. But if, if you and your friend are playing and you want to farm control points for attachments in a game, level 3 is what you want to do. Level 4s are decent, but they are pretty hard as well. Um, unless you are with a maybe full team, I would say, you can do level 4s, but they, they don't really give you anything much better than what level 3s will. So overall, level 1s are not really worth it at all unless you are trying to reach level 30. And then later on in endgame, just do level 3s. They are the best. And the way you kind of rank them up is by doing these little uh, things that are attached to the control points. So if it is a um, you know little question mark, if it's just anything else, you, you kind of complete that. It's going to level up the control point. I'm sure most of you guys already know this. And once you see it's level 3, you can just go there and complete it. It's going to be hard, as I said. But overall, just way, way better. It's it's a better kind of value for your buck, I would say, with the blueprints and just the materials and the gear and weapons you get at the end. 
Um, so yeah, this is pretty much everything I want to talk about. If you guys have any more questions on the game, let me know in the comments. I'll try to get back to you as soon as possible. But once again, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to leave a like, subscribe for more videos, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.